We're so happy to see each of you this morning and we thank God that God led you this way. It is our hope and prayer that something is said, sung, or done that will draw you closer to Christ. My name is Reverend Dr. Parker, and I serve as the pastor of Russell Temple CME Church, located at 507 North Alpha Street in the awesome city of Alexandria, Virginia. It is my honor and my pleasure to introduce our worship leader for this afternoon's worship service. She is none other than Sister Lillian Harris. Sister Harris is a member of the Stewardess Board. She serves on the Women's Missionary Society and also a member of the Social Justice and Human Concerns Commission. She has a spirit of excellence and she gives God her best. No matter what task she is assigned, she gives it her best and she does it joyfully. Can we say that? Amen, amen. She is truly a disciple of Christ and everywhere she goes, she leaves some breadcrumbs of letting us know that she is a servant of the Most High God by always encouraging, inviting people to grow in the admonition of the Lord. She is a grandmother of two. Um, she has a daughter named Toya, a grandson named um, Chancellor, and a granddaughter named Troy. Can I just say this about Sister Harris? Even though she is saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, she is a lot of fun to be with. And I admire that in her because so often we think that when we become saved, we can't have a good time, amen. And she reminds us on a daily basis that it's okay to laugh, it's okay to have a good time, it's okay to enjoy life. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, saints of God, put your blessed hands together and welcome our worship leader for this afternoon. Sister Lillian Harris, God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Reverend Doctor. You said it just like I told you. <laughs> Welcome to Russell Temple's um, service this Sunday, and we're glad that you're here. Today is Women's Missionary Sunday, and so we will be celebrating that throughout the service today. At this time, we will have the call to worship. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. That was Psalms 9, 1 through 2. And it's a blessed word for all of the hearers today. At this time, we will have the opening hymn of praise. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. To God be the glory. Today, I hymn of praise is going to be we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Every round goes higher and higher. Come on, you know the words. Sing along with us this morning. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. <laughs>
Thank you, Mr. Foster. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be climbing Jacob's ladder, literally and figuratively. At this time, we will have the invocation by Sister Vanessa Green. Following that, we will have the scripture by Sister Wanda Thurman Wynn. Good afternoon, everyone. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come first of all, Lord, saying thank you, Lord, for giving us another opportunity to see a brand new day, Father God. We thank you for our morning rising, Lord Jesus, and we thank you that we have the use and activities of our minds, our organs, and our limbs. Father God, we come asking now, Lord, that you will meet us, Lord, that you will meet us here, Lord, in this service, Lord, that you will anoint every praise, every word, every song, Lord, that is given and rendered up to you. Take us higher and higher, Lord Jesus, and we just ask that you will fill us, fill our hearts, Lord Jesus, with your spirit. Lord Jesus, touch and anoint the speaker of the hour, Lord, that you may uh, have them to give us what thus saith the Lord. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful. We're so mindful of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And we say thank you, Lord Jesus. These and all of the blessings we ask in your name. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. We come to you at this point in the service where we will hear from the Lord from his holy Bible. So let's go to, if you have a copy of the word, let's go to Isaiah 54. I'm going to be reading Isaiah 54, 15 through 17. The word says, if anyone does attack you, it will not be my doing. Whoever attacks you will surrender to you. See it, see it is I who created the blacksmith who fans the coals into flame and forwards a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyers to wreak havoc. No weapon, no weapon formed against you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the Lord, servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. God's word for God's people. Amen. Thank you so much, um, Sister Green, for the prayer. I'd love to hear you pray anyway. And thank you, Wanda, because you always put such enthusiasm in your scripture. At this time, we will have the music of ministry by Brother Larry Foster, when God dips his pen of love in my heart. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Brother Foster. I really like that song. And I'm speaking for everyone. At this time, we will have our Outstanding Achievement Recognition by Sister Wanda Wynn. Good afternoon, everyone. It's the time in our service where the Board of Christian Education on behalf of Reverend Dr. Parker would like to express our cheering for your achievements. And so today, the following achievements we bring to you, Noah Jackson. Guess what, you guys? Noah Jackson is an eighth grader at George Washington Middle School in Alexandria, Virginia. How many know that that's a historical school if you're from Alexandria, Virginia? Okay, guess what he's gonna do on Thursday? Mark this on your calendar at 5.30 p.m. On June the 3rd, our Noah is going to participate in the Spring Orchestra concert. And guess what? You don't have to worry about social distancing. It's outside at the famous Fort Ward Park Amphitheater. Wow. And guess what? I have another. Uh, his proud mom is our trust, one of our trustees, Sister LaShawn Jackson. And guess what, you guys, if you don't know it, let me share this with you. His adopted grandparents from the church are Brother Hardy and Sister Hardy. They're bragging on their Noah today. Congratulations, Noah, and the Jackson family and the Hardy family. Yay! So guess what? You may, not, you may know her, but I'll introduce her again. Her name is Reverend Dr. Michelle Parker. She recently graduated from the United Theological Seminary, I'm sorry, seminary, receiving her doctorate in a ministry degree. But guess what? She received one award, but guess what I have to tell you today? She has a second award. My goodness. Let me tell you a little bit about this award. Are you ready? Okay. So this award, she received because of her ministry capstone project. She's going to be published in a newspaper, a magazine. Let me tell you a little bit about this award. Okay. In reference to her doctorate degree, her capstone project was chosen for publication by Faith Magazine as the Harry Holzer Spirit Award. This Faith Magazine is by monthly publish that serves the 2,500 Black United Methodist churches. Did you hear me, 2,500? Mm, that's an achievement. And all active bishops, many district superintendents and other annual conference and general church leaders, as well as the growing has, has you know, submitted their subscription and they have this magazine coming to their home. They also serve the Black Methodist Church for Renewals. If you're interested, get this magazine. Okay, this is a public announcement. All right. So in their upcoming July, August 2021 issue, write this on your calendar, the, the Faith Magazine will publish her capstone project, the Harry Hoser Spirit Award. But let me tell you a little bit about Harry Holder, Hoser, if I could. The story of the Black Harry, so-called by many who knew him personally and experienced the power of his preaching, has been chronicled throughout American and religious history. Did somebody tell me history, y'all? This is history. Okay. He was the first Black preacher licensed in the Methodist Church. Through illiterate, through illiterate Harry priest, though illiterate, yeah, Harry preached his power and exodus to large crowds of both Blacks and whites. And he traveled with American Methodist founder, Bishop Francis Osbury. Harry was known for what he called his occasion of faith. I sing by faith, preach by faith, pray by faith, and do everything by faith. In honor of his, of his legacy, our magazine is named by faith. And so there you have it. Our Reverend Dr. Parker has received her second award. She was an amazing student. Wow, we are so proud of her and we bless the Murphy family and the Russell Temple Church family. Thank you. 
and continue to give us your achievements because we do want to encourage you and um, just support all of your achievements. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Wen. She gets so excited about this stuff. <laughs> Good for you. Um, at this time, we will have the Missionary Offering Appeal by Sister Bernice Golden, the Church Offering Appeal by Brother Jonas Adams, and the Offertory Song. Good afternoon, everyone. I am before you at this time on behalf of the missionaries. And um, I am here for two purposes. I, I, I've got to address two uh, areas. Um, the first area that I'm going to speak with you about is uh, the Lena Jones Rice $100 March. Uh, it takes place every year at annual conference. And what happens uh, is this, we um, ask church members or friends or whoever to become a part of our March uh, to raise money to uh, help support uh, churches that are less uh, not quite as fortunate as we are. Uh, some of these churches, they are smaller, mission churches. Uh, they are churches um, that need funds for keep the lights on, to make repairs or what have you. And so this Lena Jones Rice $100 March, uh, we are, we are uh, in place to do just that, to raise funds to help those churches that are in need. Now, Russell has been fortunate. You know, we live in an area where we have good salaries, we have good retirement income or what have you. And if Russell has a need, we come forth and we meet those needs. But there are other churches that are not uh, as fortunate as we are. So what we're asking you to do is to um, take funds from your abundance. We're not asking you to take it from your rent because we can already pay our rent. If you can pay your rent, you can buy, pay your utility, you can buy food and have clothes on your back. Anything you spend after that is out of your abundance. When you go to McDonald's into a restaurant, that's out of your abundance. So we are asking you, if you will, uh, be a $100 marcher to help the missionaries with this mission. All right, now, so far we have six, at least six sure marchers. And we would like to have at least 15. So what we're asking you is nine more people to come forward as soon as you can and out of your abundance and thank God for your abundance uh, and become a $100 missionary marcher. All right, you can see me. Uh, you can, uh, of course, the, the, the stewards are gonna tell you in a minute how you can do this. Uh, so if you will do that, we would appreciate it. So we, and we need nine more marches because we would like to have 15 so Russell can stand strong. Now, I also want to say that we want you to participate in this march as well. And it's, it's an absolute march. And um, so we are going to videotape our marches um, on uh, June 12th, no later than June 12th. So we, we need you to pay right now so that you can get yourself ready to meet us at the church. We're going to be marching outside. We're going to be marching to music. Uh, there's, there's, it's just so much fun. And we want to represent uh, uh, Russell in good, tall fashion. And I'll let you let, let, know later on what the dress uh, dress uh, code will be. But we already have the video videography person in place. The date is set. So please come forward and um, with that $100 uh, donation so that you can help these smaller churches. All right. The second thing that I need to address um, is the offering of letters. The offering of letters. Um, these are letters that we're going to write to Congress, to our Senator, to our uh, House of Representatives person. We've done this before, all right? Um, so we have the sample letter for you that uh, I have, we're gonna make available to you when we pass out our Sunday School material next Saturday. And um, that the, the offering of that, there will be a copy of the offering of that in that uh, packet so that you can get started with that. Uh, what we want you to do is to uh, give uh, these, a letter to your family members, every family member that you have. The bishop has written a letter and he is, uh, wants us to really work hard and see if we can do a greater job even this year than we've done in the past. 
he would like to see us, the, the seventh uh, Episcopal district, to send in at least 33,000 letters. So that means that we've got to work hard. I believe if at least um, 20, at least 20, but we want more than of us, would reach five more people, that uh, Russell will have uh, a good showing uh, in this offering of letters. You need to know that the Congress pay attention to this. Uh, as a result of to the offering of letters that were done in the past, Congress listened. They did not cut out the SNAP program, and they did not cut out a number of programs that they had said they were going to do. But people are aware, Congress is aware, that people are hungry, that they need to do more, if anything, for um, the, the hungry. All right, now, you can go online and fill out these letters. But uh, we have been told in, uh, in the Washington, Virginia district, if you go online and send your letter, then to please let me know so we can keep account. So it's okay to go online and do that. Uh, but I want you to be aware that if you go online, everybody that you send a letter in for, you have to include their email address. All right? So I don't know if, if that's cumbersome for you, then we're gonna make these uh, hard copy um, mailing available, letters available for you. So all I'm saying to you is please, please, please get involved and help others. I think that's all I have to say right now. Oh, I kept the date. The date for these offering of letters, they must be received uh, by December the 20th uh, for the letters and for the um, missionary business. I'm, what, what did I say? Okay, I, I'm sorry, I'm in June. I'm sorry, I jumped ahead six months. By, uh, by, December, by June the 20th, the offering of letters must be in. And you know by the, the, uh, the missionary march, you gotta get busy with that right away because we take pictures on the 12th of June. I thank you so much for your time and attention. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Thank you so much for that information, Sister Bernice Golden. You are an incredible and tough act to follow. You said that all so eloquently. I will do my best with the tithes and offerings appeal on behalf of the steward board. And it is time for tithes and offerings. We give our sincere thanks to everyone for continuing to give during these difficult times. And um, to make it a little easier, we have multiple ways for you to give here at Russell Temple. And there is the slide right on cue. Thank you so much for that. Um, you can donate by using Cash App and you can see our Cash App handle right there. And you can also download the Givelify app on your smartphone as well and I'll follow the instructions from there. And also you can go to the Givelify website on your smartphone or computer. Don't forget that if you don't like those options, that's perfectly fine. You can just send in your tithes and offerings by mail. Our address is Russell Temple CME Church 507 North Alfred Street, Alexandria, Virginia, 22314. And if you like, you can also just drive by the church and drop it off directly into our mail slot. And also, we can just pick it up for you if you would like. All you have to do is get in contact with a member of the steward board, and we will be happy to come by and pick it up and take it directly to the church for you. Thank you so much, and God bless. Peace. 
Thank you, Ms. Golden, I'm Sister Golden, and thank you, Brother Adams, for those operatory appeals, and Ms. Golden, for that information you gave us about Bread for the World. At this time, we will have the Ministry of the Arts, a video, War Cry, and following that, we will have the Gospel Message, No Weapon Formed, by Exhorter Elaine Sherman. Amen, amen. First, I want to say good morning to everyone, and I want to... Um, just thank Sister Harris for being our worship leader today. What a wonderful job you did. Also, those who participated in the service, Brother Larry Foster, for the wonderful hymn of praise, Sister Vanessa Green for that awesome prayer, for Sister Wanda Thurman for doing what she does, reading the scripture with enthusiasm, and also um, giving us the outstanding achievements, Sister Golden for reminding us about the marchers we will make sure that we get our hundred dollars somewhere in there sister brother jonas my brother on the stewards board for the offering appeal this morning i just want to thank the pastor for allowing me to come forward with the word she doesn't know this but the day that she called me the day before i was going to call her and ask her could i give a word it may not have been this month because the lord had placed this on my heart and if you look in my car, I have a bag with some mask in it. And I've been taking notes on that bag about this particular sermon. So everything just happened to um, come into place. I, and I guess that's the Lord working. The Lord was working. That's what we're going to say. I also want to thank you guys for being here because you didn't have to be here. And also my family for their support and putting up with me because it's always, uh, you go through something when you put together your sermon. So it's a lot of I'm doing something, but don't bother me. So thank them for being patient and let me put them out the room. Um, so we can just bow our heads in prayer at this time. God, our Father, creator of all things, the true source of light and wisdom, the origin of all that is. I thank you for all of us here today. I ask that you strengthen us, restore us, and inspire us with your love. I thank you for calling me to faith, for planting your word in my heart, I thank you for calling me to your service, for giving me the ability to teach your word and share this good news with the congregation today. Please let something be said or heard today that each of us can take away to better ourselves in your kingdom. This is my prayer in your precious son Jesus' name, amen. Today's word comes from Isaiah 54, verses 15 through 17, and I will reread the verses. It reads, behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is for me, says the Lord. God's word for God's people. Journey with me today as we take a closer look at the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah is known as a narrative history, a prophetic oracle, and you may even find a parable. Isaiah is the first book in a section called Major Prophets. Key characters are Isaiah, his two sons, Shajazahab, and Mashallah Jazabaz. Isaiah is a book of prophecies that encompasses foreknowledge, details about the Messiah, and the future reign of Jesus Christ. The book of Isaiah, written when the northern kingdom of Israel had been carried into captivity and the kingdom of Judah was in the middle of idolatry and evil. Chapter 54 anticipates that the salvation and res res restoration of Israel begins in part at the restoration of the exiles from Babylon in 536 BC. This chapter, Isaiah also provides a glance at the promises of the new covenant as well. You see, there are times in our lives when we experience, experience malicious gossip, rumors, marital issues, financial itch issues, disloyalty, and sickness, these are weapons, weapons that are used to try to harm, 
cripple, maim, destroy, or make us a throw in the town. However, the text suggests that when you experience such things that can be seen as weapons, remember the Lord is your shield and your protector. My subject today, no weapon for. Almost every morning when I come into work, I meet the same EMS worker cleaning the facility. Every morning I say to her, good morning, how are you? Her response is blessed and highly favored. My response is amen. But you see a couple of months ago, the response changed. I will come in and I will say, good morning, how are you? She said blessed and highly favored. She then added, I would say amen. And she added, no weapon formed against me will prosper. She started saying this every morning. I started getting paranoid and started thinking, why is she saying no weapon formed against me will prosper? Did I do something to her to harm her? Did I offend her some type of way? Then I thought, maybe I'm reading too much into this. Finally, one morning I asked her, why do you always close with no weapon formed against me will prosper? She then explained, it's for me. She explained that she had been through a lot and at times there's a war within her spirit. Repeating the scripture reminds her that the warfare over her life would never prosper. She said the weapon might be formed, but it will never prosper. She then said, I need to remind myself and others that we have supernatural protection. The discussion started me to think about the scripture, Isaiah 54, 17, and what it means. The more I read it, the more I looked at my life, things started to reveal itself. And if you don't mind, I wanna go on an excursion with you this afternoon. The scripture says, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. As I examined the text, a couple of questions came to mind. How are these weapons formed and what are the weapons? As I pondered the questions, details started to avail. When I began to see, what I began to see is that each weapon is distinctively crafted for each one of us. Our weaknesses are studied and our vulnerabilities are observed. We are put in situations where our faith is intruded upon, that people are failing us or shaking our faith. The weapon is designed to penetrate our defenses, to cause a spiritual commotion, confusion, or even chaos, which may come in the form of sickness, betrayal, addiction, depression, or financial trouble. The enemy will try to stop you. He wants to make you inefficient, ineffective, incompetent, uneconomical, and unproductive. First, you must understand that the fight is fixed. For examples, we see this most often in boxing, when the favorite is supposed to win the match, but somehow the favorite loses. Later, we find out that the fix is in, that the fighter was paid off. As I reflected, I started seeing that the fight was fixed in my life as well. For instance, you see, early in my nursing career, my chief nurse could not stand me because I was outspoken and I will fight for the rights of the nurses. She gave me the blues. I would apply for jobs and she would block me. I remember applying for my job that I currently hold, my education job, and the acting director of that department coming to speak with my manager. She asked my manager, what's wrong with her? That the chief nurse does not want her to have the job that she has with the credentials to perform. I would complain to my friends and they would say, I don't understand why you just don't find another job. But I would tell them that it's something in my spirit that is telling me that I need to stay the course. But my friends, but what my friends and the acting director did not know was that the fight was fixed. You see, the chief nurse denied me the job in August, 2015. In September, 2015, she was gone. And in November 2015, I was promoted. The fight was fixed. In other words, I'm here to tell you, as long as you are walking in Christ, you are invincible and impregnable. Let me make it biblical. Let's look at Moses in Exodus 14. 
After the 10th plague, Pharaoh allowed Moses and Aaron to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. After their departure, Pharaoh hardened his heart and sent his army after the Israelites encamped near the Red Sea. Pharaoh and his army caught up with the children of Israel and they began to panic. But Moses told the people, hold up, no need to be scared. Watch, the Lord is gonna rescue you today. You see, the fight was fixed. Moses raised his rod and the children of Israel crossed over to the other side of the sea. The Egyptians tried to cross, but y'all know the story. The waves came crashing in on the Egyptians. You see, we have the victory through the power and strength of the Lord. The fight was fixed. The weapon was formed, but did not prosper. First, one, we must understand the fight is fixed. God has us. Secondly, we must, we must walk in the spirit. The weapon may be locked and loaded, and ready to perform damage. However, when it is released, it does not mean it will hurt. It may momentarily confuse you, but if you keep walking in the spirit, you will be able to shake it off and upright yourself. For instance, I had a grenade thrown at me with a cancer diagnosis, and then a week later, a bomb came with the diagnosis of a splenic aneurysm. Two things that could cause death. One, an instant death. The weapons were formed. I'm not going to say I wasn't scared, but I had to remember Isaiah 41 10. I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am with you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with righteousness, with my righteousness right hand. I knew that I had to keep walking in the spirit. You may be asking, what is walking in the spirit? I had to be obedient. I had to do what I was taught. The first thing that I did, I prayed. You see, God hears our prayers and intercedes on our behalf. Romans 8.26 says, in the same way the spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray, but for the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. So I prayed and then I put on my whole armor of God and I stood in my place of righteousness as a child of God and claimed the victory. Jesus dying on the cross for our sins and rising from the dead with all the power in his hands made us victorious in my situation and over, our, over every situation. We are victorious through the power and strength of his Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4, 6 says, therefore, we must be willing and ready to always walk in the spirit. First, we must understand the fight is fixed. Secondly, we must walk in the spirit. And thirdly, we must understand that we got the victory. We have gone through the warfare and come out victorious. You are victorious because you are a child of God. The following are, reason, are reasons that tells us how we can claim the victory. You are the victor because you are V, diligent. Keep watch, talk to God on a regular basis. Ask for strength, wisdom, and discernment. I, get involved, develop your relationship with Christ. Pray and study his word. Talk to him often. C, cry out to God. Psalms 34, 6 says, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. For God protects and rescues those experiencing troubles or difficulties when they cry to him. T is for transform. Transform means to change. So I say, let go and grab hold of the Lord. First Peter 1, 16 says, behold, be, be holy as I am holy. Sound like an impossible task? We must understand its possibility comes by the works of God and not by the work of man. We must understand that God doesn't force anyone to change, but he calls us to be transformed. When God asks us to let go, it's so he can heal, restore, and provide something better for us. O is omnipresent. The Lord is omnipresent. Back in 1788, John Wesley wrote a sermon on the omnipresence of God. He called it sublime subject. He used his text, Jeremiah 23, 24, and said, do not I feel heaven and earth, said the Lord. 
Wesley says, there is no point of space, whether within or without the bonds of creation, where God is not. No matter where you are, the Lord is omnipresent. He sees it all. His omnipotence means he knows it all. His omnipotence means he is a big enough deal. Re or rely on God's love. No matter what we are going through, we should rely on God's love. As sinners who are saved by grace, free grace. First Timothy supports this. It tells us, but for that very reason, I was shown mercy that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus must display his unlimited patience as an example for those who believe on him and receive eternal life. In conclusion, where for warfare comes in many forms, many forms such as financial, mentally, marital, and medically, we need to understand that the fight is fixed and the truth is the provision that has been divinely made for all of us. Paul tells us that we are more than conquerors of Jesus who loved us. And he is convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height of depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Remember, the weapon is formed, but it will not prosper. Amen. Amen. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You heard the word. And if you're going through anything, all you have to remember is that Jesus is with you. And that whatever weapon is formed against you, it will not prosper. Jesus also said, if you abide in my word, there are you there, then you, are you my disciples indeed. Disciples literally means a learner, a student of the follower. Salvation may be instantaneous, but discipleship must be learned from the master, the teacher, Christ himself. We must know the word before we can teach the word. So the second requirement of discipleship is that we continue in the word of God. So I ask you today, are you re ready to become a disciple? We understand that it will not happen, it will not happen overnight, that it's a process. But the process can start now by you accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. So I ask you, is there one? Is there one? Maybe you're looking for a church home. You must understand that personal salvation is not an occasional rendezvous with the deity. It's an actual dwelling with the Lord. Christianity is not just a vocation, it's a lifelong, eternity long vocation. David was thrilled with the knowledge that his life was in God. Psalms 91 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the mighty. So if you're looking for a church home, you can stop and raise your hand. You can put it in the chat button and become a member of Russell Temple CME. If you don't want to do that, the pastor is putting her information in the chat and after this, you can call and say that you want to be a member. You want to become a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Is there one? Is there one? that we don't have anyone as of yet because we still have today or tomorrow because the number is in the chat. We're going to ask our IT team to come with our announcements. Hurt. 
somebody say that with me. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. If you really believe it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Come on. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on, God's got a blessing. 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 With your name. a blessing with my name on it. I don't know about you, but I'm excited, amen, about God having divine protection over my life. And then on top of that, God's got a blessing with my name on it. Praise God. Can we give God praise for the woman of God who blessed us this afternoon? Man, she did the darn thing. And I'm so proud of her and allowing God to use her. Praise God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And if you read that a little further, it says, because it's our heritage. Amen. Because we are God's children. We're king's kids. Sister Sherman, thank you. Thank you so much. That was an awesome word. It was a right now word. And so today, she has already extended the invitation. And I understand that Rasheen, amen, has his hand up. Praise God. And so Rasheen, we're going to ask if you would unmute yourself. And I believe he wants to say something to us. Rasheen, would you unmute yourself at this time? Yes. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, I've come to a point in my life where I need a little more understanding. Um, a lot of signs and people speaking to me um, about God speaking to them to speak to me. So I believe in a higher power. Um, but I just need to figure it out. And I know I need a family of people to help me do so. Um, and just uh, a little nervous just because I don't know where to start. Um, that's kind of where I guess I was a little held back at. Um, but once I feel I get that starting point, I can help others uh, come in and be able to have a starting point and make it a little easier for them. Um, so they're not as uh, reluctant to... Uh, at least learn the word and then make a decision from that point. Um, I feel uh, you should at least go through the Bible at least one time in your life, um, just at least know, you know, to make your decision. So um, that's where I'm at with it. And uh, it, it means a lot. You know, my family's been to this church before, my great grandmother, my aunt Wanda, Jeffrey's there. So um, yeah, I'm on, I'm on board. It's, it's time for a change. And uh, uh, 
Uh, someone told me uh, recently, you got to uh, reinvent yourself sometimes. So I think I'm at that point now where it's time to reinvent myself and uh, take a different approach. Can I just tell you, Rasheem, I am just so full right now. I bless God, amen, for your coming and to the fold, amen. The devil thought he had you, but God. And we thank Fisher Woman, Exhorter Sherman, for throwing out that lifeline. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus! Bless your name, God. Ooh, glory to God. Mm, Jesus. We bless your name, God, for bringing him into the fold, amen. Brother Rushi, my number is in the chat. Your Aunt Wanda has my number. Your dad has my number. Please give me a call. And you're talking about first steps. Trust me when I tell you, we're all going through our first steps as we draw closer and closer and closer to God. So you're not alone. But one of the many things that you said that blessed me, not only do you want to come back to God, not only do you want to study the word, but he wants to go out and bring others back to Christ. That right there is the ultimate goal of discipleship. That we're not only eaters of the word, but we become feeders of the word. And he said that today. And that just blessed my heart today because that was the Sunday school lesson this morning about going out and sharing the word. Even those who we think are deserving of it, God commands us to go. So you have my number. I will call you Amen. And if you stay on the line afterwards, I'm going to pray with you. The stewardess and I will pray with you. Amen. After this service. Praise God. Amen. So, uh, Exhort a win. I believe in if you if you throw out the lifeline, you need to bring in the fish. So anything you want to say to our brother, Brother Rasheen. As you all know that I talk about my family often and, um, you know, when um, we had the uh, prayer list uh, through, uh, I'm so full, I can't even think, but the Easter, the Lenten service, so Rashim's on my list, right? And to him, you know, I pray for you all the time. I cover all of you guys and to, you know, I was just saying in the Sunday school, whoever's been on Sunday school with me this morning that, um, you know, I want all my family to be with me. And they know I want you to worship at Russell Temple because you already got, we, we, we are solid in this family. And where, where else should you be with, with your family? And Russell Temple is a family church. And my brother's here today and, you know, he's with us as well, his dad. And I believe that our life's, continue to live the example. You know, my brother Leslie Thurman said yesterday that we got a lot of love in our family. And, but I know who has greater love than us and that's God. And if you stick with him, you will never be without love. And I say that to my nephew, cause he know that's my baby. Rashim and Brandon, a little less and all of them. Jeffrey knows that Jeffrey's the only child, but he knows these are my babies. And I pray for you in earnest. And I'm so happy and so full for what God has done because we need to leave a legacy. You know, somebody, Jay Hardy told me, Sister Jay Hardy said to me, and um, she didn't mean any harm. She said, hey, you got to build up a next family, got to build up their next generation and your generation leaving before you with my two recent nephews. And so Rasheen, I can report to Jay and say, we caught us a fish today and Sister uh Exhorted Sherman, the message was powerful. I, I will tell you, I've listened to many of your messages, but this one, it penetrated me like none of, no other message that you have had. You have studied to show yourself more thoroughly, divinely, rightly dividing the word. I will tell you that. And I just know that God is just working in the life of Russell Temple and Reverend Dr. Parker. Uh, what can I say? You have treated my family with the utmost love. And so we say thank you. And um, we will continue to wrap our arms around Rasheen. Me and Jeffrey, we got God you, God Rasheen. God All God right, God thank God. you. Amen. Exhorter Sherman. Brother Rasheen, I just want to say welcome. This message has been on my mind for a while. And it's been picking at me, as I say. And 
finally, I made up my mind. I said, let me ask the pastor. But before I can ask, as you heard, she called. And I just want to say, you've taken the first step. The first step is just coming into the fold, accepting Jesus Christ as your savior. And like the pastor said, when you said that you wanted to bring others, that just did my heart proud. And knowing that I brought a message that brought somebody to Christ, you just don't know how it makes me feel. So I'm just grateful for you and you wanted to make that change in your life. And we're here to assist you in any way. Russell is a family church. You may be Wanda's nephew and Jeff's cousin, but we your family too. And we would do anything we can to help you in your growth in the church. Amen. 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 And we also acknowledge um, Brother Leslie Thurman, the dad. Amen. And so we thank God for his being on today. Brother Thurman, would you like to say anything? If you're talking, you're going to have to unmute yourself, Brother Thurman. Okay. Uh, look at the information. Wait a minute. You thought I, I wasn't going to say something, but you called me out. <laughs> Look at the infamous Reverend Dr. Parker. Much love, and everybody gave the word today. Beautiful. I'm glad to hear my son coming to the fold. Uh, you guys know I'm still, you know, dealing with a lot of stuff. So, but I'm holding up. You'll see me uh, sooner or later. I'll come into the fold. But when I come, I'm coming full hearted. All right. I got some work to do. I understand that. Uh, and as um, Warren pointed out, uh, Russell Temple, for those who don't know, as a, as a child, I was baptized there. So I guess I've been a member just roaming around without really being a full participant into the church. So my time is coming to get back into the fold. But I'm glad to see my son stepping up and taking the first step. I'm very proud of him uh, and, and a lot of his friends and other family members should follow. Uh, the father will be coming. Right, and the father has a little bit more work to do out here, you know. And you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I got to get it right every time I say your name now. Reverend Dr. Parker. So proud of you. You did a great job. We thank you for uh, being there for the family when we needed you. And uh, and that's about all I got to say right now, you know. Appreciate everybody, and uh, God bless. God bless you. And Russell Semple, we thank you for surrounding your loving arms around the Thurman Wynn Johnson family. And you've often heard me say, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so thank you for your cards, your calls, your text messages, your emails, your visits, everything. And to those who came out to the service yesterday, thank you for being there. It means a lot when people look around and see that they that people are there to support them. So God bless you. Thank you again for doing the same thing for Sister Diana Murphy, who lost her brother-in-law. Thank you for showing her and her family much love and, and, and support, praise God. I also want to recognize the president of our New York Washington Annual Conference um, Women's Missionary Society, um, Sister um, Sandra Renee Chambers is visiting with us today. And I thank God that she's here. Uh, Sister Chambers, would you give us some remarks, please? Uh, thank you, Reverend Dr. Michelle Parker. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Temple. And, and to your illustrious servant and leader, uh, Bernie's Golden Pre Missionary President, thank you so much. I really appreciate all you're doing. I, I really appreciate Russell Temple because y'all love me so much. And I thank you, I really miss you. God bless you. I, oh, I, 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 exhorter, this was on time. I'm glad I got the email. It touched my heart, my spirit. I'm just over, overwhelmed. Thank you so, so, so much. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, President Chambers, praise God. I also wanna to say to our president, Sister Golden, and to all of the women of the Women's Missionary Society, God bless you, you did an awesome job today each and every one of you, your presence, your prayers, your praise. Thank you. And every round, as Brother Foster said, goes higher and higher and higher. And we are not the church we were yesterday, last week, last month. We're not the church we were last year. <laughs> Thank God, amen, that God continues to take us higher 
and higher and higher. And that is the result of discipleship. Praise God. We also want to give a shout out to my classmate, Reverend Deborah Manigo. And I'm going to say Reverend Dr. Deborah Manigo. She hasn't received her doctorate yet, but just like God called me doctor, speaking into existence, amen. I'm going to speak it into existence. This is an awesome preacher, awesome woman of God, and her research pro project is one that we need to hear about, and I pray that we'll be able to invite her to give a workshop on that in the near future. Uh, Reverend Manigo, um, you want to share with us today? You're on mute, I believe. All right. Okay. All right. We also want to thank um, Sister Robinson. Thank you for being with us today. And to all of our sister churches, God bless you for being with us and um, supporting our missionary day. I tried to invite as many missionaries as I could to be a part of our service today. So thank you so much for that. And um, to, again, exhort us Sherman, you just keep getting gooder and gooder. Amen. <laughs> Queen Harris, I think I'm going to let you be a uh, worship leader every Sunday for the month of June. Because <laughs> you did the darn thing. Thank you, IT team. You have no idea what they do behind the scenes. We're communicating, we're sharing. They are on time, praise God. And we thank God for our music department, Brother Foster and Sister Cherie Tucker. We thank you for that. And if you notice, everything had a theme today. Amen. This was part of our boot camp Sunday. And so we thank you for letting God use you. After service, I would like to uh, meet with Brother Rashid. And I'm going to ask if Sister Wanda Thurman and um, Sister Outlaw, um, I don't know if Sister Outlaw can join us. Uh, Sister Green, if you would join us as we go through um, the invitation to discipleship with Brother Rashid. Amen. After the service. All right, our doxology, praise God. Thank God for Reverend Phyllis Harris, who's with us every week. God bless you. Our benediction is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. Hear ye the words according to the author Moses. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you today.